Hello and welcome to this 10th video in the series of developing web applications using ASP.NET 4.5 and web forms. Today I would like to talk a little bit about sorting using data controls with ASP.NET 4.5 and most uh, importantly sorting using the grid view controls that we have defined in our solution. So to do that I'm going to jump into the development environment and bring up the project and I'm just going to show you first of all that I've added some more data to expand the sample set we've been working with so that I now have six categories and six products. Since my category listings has a page five of five, page size of five, I now have a two page uh, grid view displaying and the same holds true for products. I now have a page, five, page size of 5, and since I have 6 products in my database, I also go to the second page. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to set up sorting um, for these two grid view controls, and to do that it is very easy. All I have to do is come back to the definition of the grid views and remember that one of the attributes that uh, is in the grid view definition is allow sorting, which is set to false. So I can set allow sorting to true. And this, was, this will automatically enable sorting on my grid view. The same uh, we, uh, holds true for products, so allow sorting will go from, true, from false to true, and this will allow me to sort the products grid view as well. Now if we run the sample, what you'll see is that the column headers now become hyperlinks and I can actually click on them to sort the grid view in descending or ascending order on each of the columns. So I can sort by name, and you see that it now starts with D, goes to T, and ends with Z. Or I can sort by listing price, and that starts with 34 and ends with 119. And if we go to the second page, you see that the grid view is still sorted, and the last product, which has the highest price, 169, is on the second page. And I can also sort in, in inverse order, so that I can have the highest uh, listing price first, and the same holds true for units, or the same for tr holds true for the categories. So I can search for the categories which were last up updated first or last updated last. Now one thing that's very nice uh, with sorting, and this is one of the things I wanted to mention in this video, is that we have um, particular styles that come out di directly from the uh, style sheet which comes with the default uh, project template from Visual Studio 2012. And one thing we can use is we can use these styles to actually uh, make the grid views even nicer and indicate which column is sorted and if it is sorting in ascending or descending order. And and to do that, I'm just going to grab a little uh, code snippet and I'm going to add this to both the grid view um, for the products and the categories listings. So the snippet is going to go right underneath the columns section and underneath the columns section what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two more tags and these are the sorted ascending list uh, heading header style with a CSS attribute equals to ASC and the sorting descending header style with a CSS attribute uh, equal to DSC and let me just do that for the categories one and what this does is it tells the grid view that when a column header when a column is sorted it should actually apply the the particular style so if it is sorted in ascending order it should apply the style defined in the style sheet and called ASC and if it is sorted in descending order it should apply the style sheet defined in the style sheet called DSC so let's go to the style sheet of the product uh, of the um, project and remember this is in the content folder and it's called site CSS and towards the end of the style sheet what you'll see is that we get um, two selectors two CSS selectors and these CSS selectors um, actually indicate that if the TH so the table header element of the grid view is uh, having the ASC style as a CSS style, then go ahead and select any and select the anchor tag and append so a dot to uh, a dot dot after append the up arrow uh, Unicode uh, symbol to it. 
the same thing go, holds true for descending. So if the th, the table header element for the uh, uh, particular column uh, in the grid view has a descending style, then go ahead and select the anchor tag and uh, append to the anchor tag the down uh, arrow symbol, Unicode symbol. So what this does, if I run this in Internet Explorer, is that now my grid views are going to allow me to sort and they're also going to give me a visual indication on which column I've sorted on. So let's sort by a short description first. And note that the little glyph sign um, comes up to show that the column is now sorted in ascending order. And this also shows up on page number two. And if I wish to sort in descending order, you see that this actually changes to uh, show the down arrow. And this is all done by CSS the way it should be done and not via um, code on the server to inject the, the, the arrow sign in there. Now the other thing that I did want to mention when talking about sorting is the way that the data controls actually um, go ahead and select data from the database and remember we've populated the uh, get categories and the get products uh, methods in the code behind and we've told the grid views to use these methods, these two methods to select data from the database using entity framework. Now what happens is if I place a breakpoint on get categories, you'll see that when we execute the product context dot toy categories, no SQL is executed on database and it is the um, complete responsibility of the grid view control to perform all of the uh, construction of the uh, entity framework uh, SQL statement to uh, select only the corresponding rows which are needed. So in the case of my toy categories uh, listing, I will only select the first five rows and sort them. So let's see how this works. So I'm going to start uh, the categories listings in Internet Explorer. I'm going to hit the breakpoint. I've also started up a SQL Server profiler trace. So if I start running the trace, what you see is that if I do step-by-step -step execution, so I run over this, there was no SQL statement generated or executed on the database. And if I continue and, get, uh, and exit the method, and then continue running the page. It's only after that the um, method has returned the iQueryable collection that the grid view has used the iQueryable object to compose an iQueryable statement, which is then sent to the database. And um, you can see the iQueryable down here. So we're seeing a. If we have a look at this, um, we can start. We can see a select top five because the page size is of size, of, of size five um, from DBO toy categories which is the table that the category entities are stored in um, where row number greater than zero so start at row zero and get me the first five elements of this data set and it's only the first five elements that are going to be executed and then if I want to go to page two let's clear this trace and click on page two. This causes a post back to the server and the get categories method is run again to, ret to return a new iQueryable object. And once I execute this, you can see again that there has been no, uh, no code, uh, oops, no code on the SQL server. And once I do, the, I click continue, you'll see that the SQL server code the SQL Server statement that has been executed is select again top five because we have a page uh, page size of five, but this time we're starting on row number five because we're displaying only the elements in the second page. And this is what is called lazy loading. So if I clear the trace once again and I uh, do a uh, sort here, there we go. So we sorted ascending by name. You'll see that the SQL statement that got created by Entity Framework is select the first five rows starting at row zero and sort them according to name ascending. And if I was to go back and sort according to name descending,
and I go down in my SQL uh, in my SQL profiler trace, you see that the um, SQL statement that got created was select top five for the page size of five, but starting with row zero, but this time select uh, select by descending order on the name column, and this actually allows me to get just the data set I need to display and not load the entire data set in memory. And these, this will become important later on when we are going to start looking at implementing the repository pattern in our um, application in the next video.